You guys pumped up about this uh, series? Holy hell, yes, we are. We're oh, all, my gosh. Yeah. We're also pumped up to have you on because last time you called us out, it had been too long. So we're like, we got to get our S together. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to have you back on. <laughs> You're one of our favorites. <laughs> well, that's because I like the Mavs and Jake is my boy. But mm -hmm. no, they're, mm -hmm. uh, that I like, I, I do, um, you know, I loaded up on the Mavs after they lost game one. I doubled down on them. I think, I think they're going to do all right in this series. I, I, I just, I, I just feel like they're going to figure it out. They, I, I love what they did for game two. The, the 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 law that we always run by is the desperate team law, and I think the Mavs were the desperate team in game two. Do you think there's any desperation from Utah going back home after kind of, you know, getting, I, I say embarrassed, but after getting beat by a luca -less team? Yeah, well, here's how I look at, like, Utah, right? They have a good offensive rating. I think that, that's the analytic side of it. But a lot of times, I just don't love the shots that they take. A lot of times you're asking yourself, you just missed eight three-pointers in a row. Why would you take another one? And I like how Dallas was, like, picking on certain matchups, but not, like, over, like overly doing it. For, for instance, you know, you love Jalen Brunson getting to the paint, but what really made that work was Kleba standing in the corner. So they were, like, playing this two-man game. It wasn't like, now I'm, I have to shoot the ball. So there's a lot of things that I like with um, the way that Dallas played. And I just and I say all that because I'm not sure that Utah changes what they do, nor do I feel like when I watch that team, that team is connected, where they're going to be like, yeah, we have to. This is our season. Our season's on the line. They might want to go home. They might want to break, break, uh, break this thing up. They might want to move on. They might, Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, like we keep hearing rumors that they like each other, which makes me think they actually don't like each other. So <laughs> I'm kind of wondering, like maybe these guys are a little bit checked out, but obviously when you're at home, it's different. Momentum swings are bigger. Like if you get down by 12, and if you're Dallas and you get down by 12, it's hard to come back on the road when that happens. So we'll see what happens, but – Rudy Gobert, who's a fantastic defender, can be exposed in the playoffs. If you can tell your guys you are going to take this shot every single time you get it, and we're just going to live with the results. You know, looking, Brian, at the when they lost to the Clippers last year, kind of one thing that stands out is, and then the Mavericks two games, is if you shoot 40% from three or better against Utah, you win the game. Is that way too simple to look at it from a Maverick standpoint of making your threes? I mean, it's, it's, uh, but I would say, I would just take it one step further. Like what type of threes are you getting? You know, like here's, here's a good example, right? Like e even this one might seem like the same shot. It's not the same shot. Ball gets driven, hits the wing, that wing touch pass over to the corner. Like even catching the ball from the corner, from the wing to the corner and then shooting it, like some guys, it doesn't matter, but some guys it does. But as opposed to getting into the paint and then kicking it right out to you, that's an easy shot. So like those are called direct line shots. If the Mavs continue to get those shots where they crack the paint, Gobert comes in and you kick it out to the corner, if you get those, then I think, yeah, I think they're going to shoot over 40%. But it depends. Like you can come down and take a bunch of bad shots, and then it's not, it doesn't become a make-miss league. It becomes a good shot league versus a bad shot league. And as you saw throughout that game, they had appropriate aggressiveness in both. They got downhill. They got to the paint. But they moved it. And then the guy shot that, like, Kleba shooting the ball with confidence. Bullock shooting the ball with confidence. That's also part of it. you gotta, you got to believe that these are the shots we're going to get and we're going to live with this. When you're getting that from your coach, from your players, from everybody, you shoot that ball with a little bit more confidence. Obviously, we have been almost entirely focused on the Luka injury, but with Booker, with Middleton, like you're starting to see them pile up. How big of an impact do you think this will be in terms of like shifting winners for Series 1 or shifting the favorites? I think Series 1, obviously Luka would be the biggest impact. I think the Bucks and the Suns will both win their first round series. It does become an issue like for the Bucks if they play the Celtics or the Nets in the second round. Um, I, I think Phoenix would be able to like like could get out of the series like like they're really good and maybe maybe they're the difference maker if Luca can come back uh, you know against the Phoenix Suns and 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 Booker is out like that that could be a factor but I I do think that of all the of all the guys who to get hurt like Luca's probably one of the more valuable guys maybe Nikola Jokic would be another guy that like man like how would Denver ever beat Golden State without Nikola Jokic they might not be 
to them with Nicole Jokic, but then you can shift your focus over to Jamal Murray. Like they're missing guys like Jamal Murray on this thing. So injuries do come into play and it's a part of winning and losing championships. It's just, that's how this whole thing goes. And uh, I don't, like I said before with, with Luca, man, that's a, it's a, I still think Dallas is going to win the series, but um, it is, it's got to be a much tougher series if he's not going to play. But I'm from, from the outside, we're hearing game four, maybe game five. Are you guys hearing the exact same thing? Game, yeah, game four, the the question mark on tonight, but game four, you know, kind of maybe. Oh, I know, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I, you know, I, I think it's the, the overwhelming feeling amongst the people here is that four is the game he'll be back for. Well, I would say, would you guys, I think I would roll the dice if somehow you win three, doesn't that buy Luca one more game? Heck yeah, yeah it, does. it does. Absolutely. Yeah, that's kind of the way I would look at it, too. Like, if, if the Mavs come out and get this win, this is like, like that's huge, and then then you have a little, a little bit of house money, and then if Luca comes back for Game Five, then obviously for the calf or a hamstring or stuff like that, you want as much time as you possibly can. And if they can come away with a win in this one, this it'll it'll be a big win. It'll send a big message. So Brian, help us out here. I don't know if you ever dealt with a calf strain, or I'm sure you had teammates that at least did. When Luca comes back, whether it's tonight or whether it's Saturday or Monday. What can we expect from his minutes? Because he usually plays all 12 minutes of the first quarter, then sits out approximately four to five minutes of the second quarter, then plays the last seven to eight minutes there, then plays all of the third quarter, sits out two to four minutes of the fourth quarter, then plays the last 10 to uh, eight minutes of the fourth quarter. When he comes back, would you expect that? Or would you say, no, you can't push it that much? Yeah, I would think you would. like If it, if it was game four, I would think – you know, like six minutes at a time, maybe maybe seven minutes, and like this first stint, and then see how he is. So, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't expect him to go twelve straight. I think that there would be some adjustment to his minutes, and you know, like you got to kind of reevaluate that. But once again, like the playoff rotation, like you're you just named off there his regular season minutes. Playoff minutes will be much different than his regular season minutes. So, even if there is an uptick in his playoff minutes, which we're starting to see that around the league, like guys are going like more like 42, 43, 44. Like, I, I don't know if Luca will do that, but it, he, he could play his normal regular season minutes. I think the biggest thing to do early on, especially with a calf, like I think calf, hamstring, growing, right? Like those are the three that you have to like, how you feeling? Come back to the bench. You feeling all right? It's a little bit tight. Okay, we got to work on it. Okay, how about now? It's a lot of that because you just never know. And, and if it goes again, he's out for, you know, another, you know, three, four, five yeah. weeks. So it's one of those things like, it's like you better have a sprained ankle because like a sprained ankle, you know what it feels like. All right, it hurts. Oh, it's feeling better. Cass, like you can still find. Look at look at Kevin Durant. And I'm not using. I, that's the worst case scenario. He was out six weeks, and he comes back. He has 12 points. He does a hesitation dribble on Kawhi Leonard, and boom, he snaps his Achilles. And no one, you can't tell me that they're not correlated. Like mm. you know, I don't care what anybody says. Like that's there is a correlation between that. So it's just one of those things where you just got to be really precautious. But listen. Those guys know more than we know. Like they, they pay millions of dollars a year for sports science and all that stuff to figure this whole thing out, and they're not going to risk Luka Doncic if they feel, feel like he's going to come back. And by the way, like I said, with the win in Game Two, and there's a this is a big, uh, a, a big, a big Game Three. Like they got to be thinking about house money. Like how far can we push this thing down the road before we bring him back? Because even if you do win the series, you're going to have to go against that gauntlet called the Phoenix Suns. Speaking of house money, uh, Brian Scalabrini joining us here on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. Magic Johnson tweeted out after Jalen Brunson's performance, he will be a free agent this summer and is going to get paid a lot of money Huge opinions. for his services. And I, I do I do want to know, does that one game isn't alone the thing, the, the factor for Jalen Brunson's offseason, right? Well, no, I mean, he had a great year, all year, and, and – uh, Every time, it's like his job is a lot harder than people think. Like being, like to play alongside Luca, to be the backup of Luca when that happens, like that's not an easy job. There's not a lot of guys in the NBA that can do it. I was, I was shocked, shocked, and I don't know what Dallas was doing this off. And I love Dallas, love their team. I think they're innovative. Everything they do, right? I thought the Porzingis trade was good, I got that. but them not ex- extending. Uh, Jalen Brunson for $14 million a year, that's going to come back to bite them big time. Mm-hmm. I just thought they he should have done it. It's 56, four years, 56. It's look around. And it's like one of those things where, well, he's a second-round pick and all these other things. 
you could have done it like early in the preseason watching him play. Like he's going to have a good year this year. He's a good player. He has like the right mentality. I just, I was surprised that they didn't extend him. And now he might get 18 to 20. Mm. He could get more than that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going after him. There's not just one team going after him. There's five guys that want him. I'm hearing New York wants him. I didn't even know magic. Basically, that's like basically saying the Lakers want him. I don't know how they'll get him, but Detroit wants him. Like there's a lot of teams out there that want him and, they might be willing to uh, open up that checkbook. Just remember, like to me, he's very similar to Fred Van Fleet, who got twenty three million dollars. Yeah. That is the literal example yeah. that we have used when it comes to projecting his contract. Yeah, That's, I just thought it was a bad. Once you saw Fred Van Fleet sign that that, that contract, and I get it, like a championship, like he was an all star this year. He was great. Van Fleet was great this year, but you got to think like someone fourteen million in the NBA now, like. The, like you, I'm surprised. I am shocked. I don't know what was going on there in the off season. You, know, I don't know what. Like I was shocked. Maybe it was the Porzingis money, and they're like, man, we can't do this with Porzingis. I, I was shocked that they didn't extend him at 14 million. Hey, uh, Brian, before we let you go, Dinwiddie's had 22 and 17, but we're all still sitting around here going, when is he going to have his breakout playoff game? And does, Kevin asked earlier, do, do you need him to have that game? And I'm kind of curious your thoughts on that. Uh, the way I look at Dinwiddie is he's a, he's a player that is going to like really thrive off of having Luka out there. Um, it's, it's, it's no knock on him. Like Sometimes in the NBA, and I would put myself in this category as well, Like I can't do certain things. And when you ask me to do certain things, I, I, I go backwards. Right, so I just think like with Luca on the floor with Dinwiddie, there's a lot of things that Spencer Dinwiddie can't do. Luca Doncic takes takes a lot of the heat off of him, and even Jalen Brunson to a certain extent. So I, I maybe he'll play fine, but I think his breakout game and like when he'll really hit his tries, and this is the reason why Dallas probably traded for him. When when Luca's out there, Dinwiddie could have some really big nights, some really big nights. He has the personality. Like, the I don't care sometimes, which is not a bad thing all the time. It's a good thing sometimes. Like, that's like you need a Luka Doncic out there for him to have big night. So I'm not expecting that until Luka comes back. 